Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, today I just wanted to take some time to talk about some of the work we've been doing looking at dietary and management regimes to possibly decrease ammonia emissions. As Rick Todd mentioned, most of the ammonia that comes from the feed yards comes from urine spots uh, on the pen surface, and this most of this nitrogen can actually be lost in three days or less, especially during the summer. Uh, because of that, there's probably about three or four different mechanisms we can use to try to decrease ammonia losses. First, we can try to decrease ammonia or urea uh, excretion. Uh, we can then try to inhibit or the, the breakdown of urea uh, to ammonium and carbon dioxide by inhibiting the urease enzyme, or we can bind the ammonia or convert it to ammonium, which is less volatile, once it's on the pen surface. And we've been doing some research in all three of these areas. I think whenever we look at or talk about reducing ammonia emissions, we need some prerequisites because we don't want to have any adverse unintended consequences. Uh, for example, we don't have negative effects on animal performance or health. Uh, we don't want to affect worker safety or health. Uh, we don't want to affect other air quality variables such as odors or particulates. And we also do not want to have an effect on water quality. Uh, now, on January, of six, January 16th, the LPE Learning Center had a webcast in which I discussed quite a bit our work on dietary effects on ammonia emissions. So I won't go into detail on that today. But just to summarize, uh, as Rick mentioned, we can probably reduce our ammonia emissions by decreasing dietary crude protein concentrations as long as we don't have any major negative effects on animal performance. We can also limit the amount of ruinally degradable protein in the diet. And normally that, in our finishing diets and feed yards, normally that would mean urea. So we want to limit urea to the lowest level that was necessary. Another thing we can do is phase feed protein. So rather than feeding lower protein through the entire feeding period, we can reduce it just the last 45 to 60 days and we maybe get, get benefits almost as good as uh, decreasing it for the entire feeding period. And then we also have some data suggesting that feeding supplemental fat may actually reduce ammonia, although we're not sure exactly the mechanism on this method. I think some additional conclusions we can come up with are that feeding and management technologies that increase our production efficiency, such as feeding ionophores or beta agonists or our hormonal implants, also tend to decrease our ammonia emissions per unit of beef production. Uh, we've been doing some work, uh, David Parker and I, with NBPT, which is a urease inhibitor, and zeolites, which are a, essentially a mineral that can bind ammonia. And what we've seen in our lab scale studies, which I'm showing here, is that when we use the zeolite or the urease inhibitor, we could reduce our ammonia emissions by about 50%. Uh, from our chambers. However, when we combine the two, we reduced emissions about 83%. And so we believe that there may be a synergistic effect when we use an urease inhibitor with an ammonia binder. One thing that David Parker did show, however, in Vince Barrel at Clay Center, Nebraska, has also shown this, is that with the NBPT and probably with most of these pin surface amendments, they will have to be applied to the pin surface uh, for quite frequently, especially after rains. But here in David's work showed that he had to add the urease inhibitor about every eight days for it to be effective. I think in summary, we can say there are a number of potential surface amendments that can reduce our ammonia emissions, such as alum, zeolites, and urease inhibitors. Uh, unfortunately, these amendments have to be applied to the surface quite frequently. Uh, mixtures of things like urease inhibitor and ammonia binder may have a synergistic effect on ammonia losses. Uh, unfortunately, currently, none of these are probably cost effective. And so, therefore, if we need to be reducing our ammonia emissions right now, dietary may, uh, modifications may be our best option. With that, I'll turn it back to Rick Stone.